Good morning, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. We're gonna try and get through this video even though my neighbors are doing some construction. So hopefully there won't be too much cutting and splicing and editing that needs to be done. I wanted to make a video today because there is something that I'm just dying to talk about, slash correct, slash discuss, slash use as an opportunity for learning. First off, let me say thank you to all of the kind comments on my video the other day. It's amazing how much better I feel after four days of steroids and antibiotics. I feel way better. Um, probably look a little bit better, but not all the way back to full speed yet. But I wanted to take the time to make a video today because it seems like on an annual basis this time of year, there is a bit of advice or um, some thoughts that folks have about growing watermelons that gets perpetuated. And I think it's really important that we discuss it for a number of reasons. So around this time every year, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, this is when watermelons are ripening in late August and early September, and through late September, depending on your climate. And folks will comment like, why is my one watermelon really oblong and the other one really round? They're from the same seed packet, or they're from the same um, variety. And the answer that comes up over and over and over again is, well, the long melon is a male watermelon and the round one is a female. And it's amazing to me how many times that comment is repeated and how many likes it gets on social media, on TikTok, on Facebook, what have you. And I thought this is a great opportunity to one, explain why that is so unbelievably wrong and two, to have an opportunity to learn a little bit more about botany. So not only are we better equipped to understand what is happening in our garden, how we produce our own food, which makes us better gardeners, stronger gardeners, more informed permaculturists. It also enhances the way that we view the garden and the world in general when we are empowered with the knowledge of how the natural world works. So for me, I find a lack of scientific literacy in our culture overall greatly concerning, uh, and it, it, it ripples out through the culture in many ways. It isn't just about watermelons. When we have failed to educate our children and our communities in the basics of science. So while this is explaining about how watermelon and, and fruit in general is produced at like really basic concepts of botany, there are greater implications when we don't teach scientific literacy to our children. So sorry to make that really loaded with like all kinds of layers. I'm sure you thought you were here to hear a debunking video about watermelons, but let's think about what the broader implications are. Okay, so back to the watermelons. I can see how this myth got perpetuated, how we took uh, as a society kind of our um, stereotypes and assumptions about masculinity and femininity and applied it to two different shapes of watermelons. The big, virile, elongated, larger watermelon must be the masculine watermelon. It must be the manly watermelon. And the smaller, rounder, softer looking watermelon, oh, that's feminine. That's a girl watermelon. So what is a fruit? A fruit is the mature, swollen ovum of a female flower you cannot have male fruit. That's not a thing. Now you can have parthenocarpic fruit, which is fruit that is produced without uh, pollination. And that's a whole other, we could talk about that later. That's a really fascinating concept in botany. But when we're eating fruit, what we're getting is the, the male flower contributes pollen. It is received into the female flower, moves down the pollen tube and is deposited in the ovum. Here's where you get fertilization taking place and you get seeds produced. The seeds grow and mature inside the ovum of the female flower. That ovum swells. It often, you know, changes shape and color. It develops sugars or carbohydrates for the purpose of enticing animals to the plant itself so that they will consume the fruit and disperse the seeds through their manure. Why do plants want to do this? Well, fruit is a wonderful way that plants have evolved to distribute their offspring throughout the environment. That's really important because you don't want to have the parent plant, which is large and mature, and all of its offspring dropping on the ground right next to it. And then you find that all of the offspring are not only in competition with each other, but also the parent plant. So you want to spread your genetics out. You want to spread your offspring out into the world where they have the best chance of success. Fruit is the way that you, a completely sessile plant, get 
the mobile animals in your environment, birds and mammals and insects and all kinds of creatures to eat your fruit, carry in their digestive system, your offspring, AKA the seeds, and then poop out the seeds all over the place as they wander. It's a fantastic system. The fruit that you are eating is the swollen, mature ovum of the plant. The offspring are the seeds. So when folks say there's male watermelons and female watermelons, that is not possible. Male flowers produce pollen. Fruit is inherently female. Think about it this way. Have you ever seen a male human carry a fetus in their testicles? No, you haven't, that's not a thing. So when we think about fruit, we need to think about it as inherently feminine, as inherently the female reproductive part of the plant. It's really important that we understand these differences, both so that we can be, so I hope that helped clear that issue up a little bit. There is so much lore and mythology and just straight up misunderstanding when it comes to food cultivation, both on a home scale and on a larger scale as well. I think it's wonderful. Obviously, my whole channel is about encouraging folks to grow their own food and to embrace permaculture principles to become more resilient. I think it's wonderful that folks are more interested in gardening. I think there have been um, some significant and beneficial changes in folks trying to grow their own food on whatever scale that they can, on focusing on local and seasonal food production. I think that's wonderful. But that increase in interest has to come with an increase in our knowledge base, an increase in our education when we understand how our food is produced, when we understand the basics, not only of botany, but also of ecology, when we understand the way that um, we interact with our environment, we are part of our environment, the way organisms in the environment connect to each other, and how they function, how their basic biological functions work, we become not just enriched in our minds, but we also become better equipped as gardeners to understand what's going on, how to troubleshoot, how to increase our yields. And as I said earlier, it ripples out into our understanding of everything else. When we increase our knowledge of the natural world, when we increase our scientific literacy, it is going to benefit us. It's going to benefit our society as a whole. The way that we vote, the way that we look at policies and issues, when we understand the science, we can make better choices. So I hope that um, that you can look at your fruit and know that that is the mature female reproductive part of the plant, that you can feel empowered in the way that you go out and garden and the way that you interact with your garden every time you increase your knowledge base. Every little bit that we can gain and put into our minds makes us stronger and better gardeners. It increases our wonder at the natural world and it increases the resilience of our entire society. So sorry to wax a little bit philosophical on that, but I just think it's so important. I think there's so much tied between greater issues in our culture at the moment and a huge de-emphasis on science, a huge discouragement to have scientific literacy, a fear of science that seems to perpetuate certain parts of our um, our society and, and filters into how we educate our children, uh, both in public school and within our homes. So yay science, let's make sure that we are uh, understanding what is happening around us. There's no shame in being ignorant. There is worry when we maintain willful ignorance and when we are afraid to learn how things actually function. Let's increase that curiosity. So thank you for watching today. Please check out my Patreon down below. I also have a PayPal and a Venmo. If you think that my content is educational and enriches you, you can say, thanks, I want to support your work in even a small way. That's really helpful to me. It helps me feed my family and, you know, be able to make these videos for everybody. So thank you very much for watching. I will be back later with more for my permaculture garden. Thanks.